left off and in our story, but I, I wanted to share a little something first. Um, I pulled up some of the comments off of YouTube because, as you know, we're doing this series trying to help anyone who needs encouragement, whether it's veteran spouses, family, um, members that have lost loved ones, the veterans themselves. And we got a sweet note from somebody a week ago. It said, your stories take place not far from me. I'm from Modesto. I have not served, but hearing stories like this keeps me in line. It reminds me I have no excuse. It encourages me to live when times are rough. You folks have a great heart. I appreciate you. I'm not big on words and thank you for your service. And there was another one that really moved me because uh, it's not easy for Dennis to share. And one of the things that we've noted is that for many, many, many years, we never talked about anything having to do with Vietnam. We didn't talk about Dennis's service. We didn't talk about, we didn't open up. It just, it was the subject where you don't go there. And but it's not really hard for me to share now because it's not about me. Right now. It but used to be then, hard to share. Yeah. But now there's a reason I am sharing. But that. so we had a gentleman after we had launched episode 9B that said, I literally have goosebumps and I'm crying. I need to hear this right now. Thank you for sharing. And I just want to say that that's the point of our sharing some things that may sound insane, crazy our problems, what we walked through. It was far from perfect. We're not claiming that. We're saying somehow we bumbled through and there was a lot of pain, but we've made it and anything that we could share to help y'all. So then the last little thing, and I had this to surprise my husband. He talked on the last episode about how we gave everything up in Terabella. And here we went to this school in Oklahoma and I found these. There's a picture of part of the school in Oklahoma, this grounds we went to, where we left this big income, all of our folks, I'm pregnant, we've got two kids picking up where we left off. And he was saying how when he got there, he had started falling in love with people and was so grateful to be alive. And instead, he mentioned about how he was tarring roofs. There was just he was covered in tar, he was there all by himself tarring roofs and going what the heck is happening. And then uh, last but not least, he also mentioned that we were willing to leave everything that where we literally, they didn't offer us a salary or whatever. And within a few days, we were headed down to Odessa, the slums of Odessa, Texas. And we had mentioned that everything we owned. And here I have a picture from the event where this was literally the uh, car and the, the little thing that hauled what little we owned. So anyway, I thought that would be fun to throw in some... Um, Hold that back up. But that's their car. That's a Cadillac. Oh, yeah. No, we had <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. We were in the Audi, which I tried to find it. I found it. I put it on Instagram. But I don't know if our content creator is going to kill me because I'm messing up all this stuff. But I mentioned that when we went to go to Odessa, Texas, that... Our two sons, Isaac and Israel, literally were jammed in an Audi with everything else that wouldn't fit in the trailer. And here is a picture, literally, of the two little babies. There was a microwave that probably could have killed them if we'd been in an accident. We were so stupid. We just believed everything would work out and this and that. It was crazy. But so those were the babies inside the car. That's a real family picture. So here we were. Uh, mom helped us out. We made it through the snowstorm. We headed back to California being told that we would have some help. And the last final joke about the windshield wipers being broken to, to pick up on the story was that as we came driving through the Tehachapis to come back to California, there was a horrific rainstorm. <laughs> And so to the bitter end of coming back from the Midwest, Dennis looked at me and started laughing. <laughs> he said, you've got to go up out the sunroof again. And I had to be the windshield wipers so that we could make it to my mom and dad's house where they had said that they would help us find a home. And I was just thinking as we're talking to veterans, uh, the fun of a 30 some odd year old man going to his in-laws with no income a family, not just you and me now, the dysfunction, the the not life being what it was and coming no matter how nice they were trying to be about helping us, how hard it was to accept that help 
and uh, go in and stay with relatives and wonder what the heck was going on. And we we tried so hard for the for our son's sake to hide what we were feeling, what we were going through. Um, Mm. We were, you know, if they had warm food and we Mm. could throw them a ball Mm. and we just kept telling him everything was okay and we were going to make it through whatever. And so we started searching and that's when we found the little Myrtle Street house. You know, if you, uh, if you are learning to be sober after years of drinking and drinking, drinking. I talked about being sober for 25 years. Well, this was part of that 25 years I was sober. And if you don't think that was hard, going to my father-in-law's with two children at my age after having our own business and um, with no inside of what the future was going to be, uh, I remember hiding, they had a basement in their house, and I remember literally hiding down there because I was I was young and prideful still, and it was absolutely killing me that I didn't have a job, I didn't have a house. I mean, um, you know, young people out there, you guys are going through stuff. Trust me, you're not the only ones that live that kind of thing. And now that I'm older, I look back and, and I'm so grateful now for what they did to help us. But then all I could see was me. But but uh, Diana's mother's still alive. She's 87 years old. This December and 20th, 87. She'll probably be watching this episode at some point. And I don't know if I ever thanked her. I don't know. Because in situations like that you don't really see past yourself and you you don't feel grateful when you're not at that maturity yet and my only thought was I've got to get out of here this is the worst place on earth well when you think about it it was the best place on earth because nowadays as we drive down the freeways and we see these guys living in tents on the side of the freeways and they're addicted to drugs and alcohol, and, and it just rips your heart out. And, of course, that wasn't a reality to me back then because I was going to do something. It didn't matter. You were going to try. We had to do I had to do you were something. You going to try. You know, I had two kids, and, and we were making decisions. Just, well, the word faith. By faith, we were making decisions. And we believed we, we would be taken care of, and we were, but it, it wasn't the way I would have chosen to be taken care of. And it was horrendously hard, especially when I couldn't go to the crutch of alcohol. It was all believing that everything was going to be okay. And like Diana said, we ended up moving into this little small house um, in between our house and her parents' house. Well, quick, but, just a little segue about that. And later, you know, at the time, many people didn't understand uh, stress injury, what that can entail mentally, emotionally, whether your brain freezes, whether you just have a very short fuse, all these things. And later, my mother would tell me that, you know, they didn't know. They just knew I married this guy and um, that he had served in the war but here's my father, who literally was a teacher that missed, I believe they said, three days out of his whole teaching career. And he started teaching when he was like 24 or 26. And he literally worked until into his uh, 60s, I believe, and missed literally three days of school. So his old school work ethic was, and we were raised, you know, you take two aspirin and keep going no matter what. And um it was a very different time and a different generation. And he was trying to understand when we were uh, in these different situations where even though they had offered to help, it would, it was like, well, um, what's the next step? And that's something that always, because Dennis's ability to live in the moment and not worry about the next step, that became a huge part of our marriage and interaction was 
I would say, you know, oh, well, we need to grab the newspaper. It was like he would just feel bad and know that something needed to happen. But the wherewithal to get there was a big, huge thing. So, uh, as I said, my mother later said we had now I understand what he was going through. But at the time, we were going out of our minds like, what's he doing sitting downstairs? Why isn't he? putting on a suit and, you know, going out and putting in applications 15 times a day. If you want to get a job, this is before the internet and before all that. It was like, how do you help yourself? Well, you get up and you go do this X amount of hours a day. And Dennis had never really fully on his own uh, filled out a job application. He talked to people of construction, whatever. Yeah. But he would have people literally help him with forms and things because of the um, stress injury that he was carrying and the short fuse and the uh, learning to walk away from things rather than explode. And so anyway, uh, the good news on this go round was that we had been told that they wanted to help us. And so we found this amazing. I was still pregnant, hadn't had Israel yet. Uh, He was due like within a month or very shortly. And we found the cutest little house, and it turned out to be a real godsend because the owner uh, wanted little things fixed up. So she not only gave it to us for an amazing rate, but she kept Dennis in little jobs. She said, well, I won't, I will pay for the stuff. I won't pay you to do it, but you two can fix up this house any way you want, and I'll buy everything that you need. So then we had talked and I said, what are we going to do? There was just nothing seemed to make sense job wise that Dennis uh, could do or was fit for or whatever. And so we ended up putting an ad in the uh, new local newspaper and we start, I think it's a little classifieds. And we said, you know, handyman, rake leaves, uh, haul stuff. We didn't even have a truck, but we knew we could rent a truck to haul stuff and figure it in the cost. But so those were uh, some crazy days. But so here we were, we got in our little house and the day came and Israel came and he came quickly. And all of a sudden there we were, little family now with the addition of a third son, Dennis was like, there were a few jobs that came in, but not enough to keep us going. And he didn't want to be on the public dole. That was very embarrassing if you had to have help or food stamps or anything like that. Uh, Receiving anything, he just never felt like he deserved or prideful. Uh, Not realizing that there's a cost when you go through some of these things and there's going to be fallout. As we mentioned, I think in one of the episodes, he was still dealing with survivor's guilt and feeling like he shouldn't didn't even have a right to be here. So off we went to um, just checking things around town. And then you took off to the coast. He was very frustrated and said, I need to get away. I'm getting in the car. I'm taking our last $10. This is a true story. I had $10 to last a week. That literally was for milk money or whatever. And he said, no, I've, I've got to get away. I need to find out what the heck's going on with a third son. Now they want to I need to have a real, a real was, job. I'm going to talk about what I was feeling. Mm, do it. <laughs> do it. I was pissed off. I mean, I didn't understand how this, you know, I was so non-social and all I could do is physical work. Like she said, cutting down trees, yard work. I didn't care what it was. I just needed to work. So I'm driving around in circles, but I knew that wasn't that wasn't getting it. That wasn't enough money. I was just working when the lady needed me to work. So I went for a drive, and I was driving around in circles. And I thought, man, I got to I got to get out of here. I was at that point. I wasn't drinking yet. The boy's about to drive me to drink it again. So I said, well, I'm driving around circles. I went home and told Diana, I said, and I never know how much money we have since we've been married. She takes care of everything. I never know Uh, because (laughs) I'm not real good at handling money. And as long as I had money for whatever, I didn't care about what the bank said or all that. So part of the dysfunction, I'm sure. But I went to her and I said, I got to go. I got to get out of here. I need to drive somewhere. And she said, we only have, I don't know how much money we had. We didn't have much money. 
But she says, take it and go. If you feel like you got to get the heck out of here, take it and go. So I went to the coast and it was Cayucas, California. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. My favorite place on the beach. So I can remember going there and I stayed in this motel. I think we had two days worth of money. So I figured, you know what? I'm not going to eat anything. I'm just going to eat sunflower seeds to survive. Didn't even care. I had no appetite. So I'm eating my seeds and I'm drinking Diet Coke, I think it was in the day. And uh oh, first day goes by and I'm getting nothing. The whole thing was about a job, finding a job. What kind of job? I didn't know. All I knew is I got to find a job. So the whole thing was so freaking hard. I, uh, Israel was just born. I got two kids and a baby now, and I'm going, man, I have to have a job. So I'm sitting in this motel room. <laughs> Shoot, I only got one day left, and I got to go back and look at her and say, she's going to say, well, what happened? And I have to say nothing. Uh, so I'm down on the beach, and I'm, man, I am desperate. And I'm sitting there on this rock going, man, I, I have to have a job. And so depressed. And it, it was done. I said, well, I got to go back to the realm. I'm, you know, I don't know what to do, what to, what to do. So I'm walking back to the realm and I'm walking up this little hill on the beach. And I look over and I see this help wanted sign on this motel complex, a small, I think I had 17 rooms. And it said, help wanted in the window. And I thought, oh, I'm going to keep walking. I said, I'm going to help wanted in a, in a, you know, but what would I do in a place like that? I can't build it. I'm in construction. <laughs> what do I have to do with that place? And I just felt this strong go up there. So I, I said, well, I'd, I'd do anything for my kids, but I'm not going to be no maid. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, they're going to want a maid. So my attitude was, yeah, what you're saying, you know, it's what you have your help. It with. said me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember that. I just remember help wanted. <laughs> and so I I go in there and this lady comes up and and she kind of had a little accent. I don't know where she was from. But chili. Chili or something. I don't know. But I, I was just kind of want to hit it real quick and get out of there. <laughs> yeah, I saw you, saw you sign the window. Yeah, I'm looking for, well, we're actually looking for a maid. Oh, well, that's not me. And uh, I said, but you know what? My my wife and I used to manage uh, a place. I can't remember what we managed, but what was it? Oh, it was, it was another motel, wasn't it? I have no idea. We had management experience, and I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm wondering if you were thinking of the care home experience or... Uh, whatever we'll think of it. It's only been 60 years. But I thought we had management experience. I thought that's what I shared with her. You'll, mm-hmm. you'll think of it. But anyway, the lady said, well, no, you know, we really need maids. And she, this guy from the back room says, hey, whatever her name was, get his phone number because you never know is what he said. And so I, you know, whatever, gave her a phone number and went away totally depressed. So I took off and I went, drove home, and not excited about anything because she didn't say she was going to hire me. I just went home feeling totally depressed still. Oh, Diana, by the way, I told her what had happened. And some guy yelled from the back room, said, yeah, if I ever need you, you know, I have your phone number. I said, I don't know if anything will ever come come of it but just in case you get a phone call that's that's what happened when I was over there mm-hmm. and so sure enough it must have been the next day or that day it's a couple days a couple days couple later days. the phone rings and um I can't remember if he called or she called do you it's probably her I'm, I'm not sure I think it was her yeah I think it was her yeah, yeah, she yeah. called yeah, remember me Cayucas blah 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 and I go yeah and she goes uh would you, uh, you and your wife be interested in, in uh, managing our motel? And I said, uh, tell me a little, you know, tell me about it, a little bit about it. And I think you had shared that we had run uh, businesses before. I was thinking about Terabella and the times that we had the care homes. You had said that we had run businesses. Man- managing. Managing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
-hmm. Anyway, you had the brains to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just was talking to this lady and she goes, we'll pay you X amount and you will have a manager's room to live in. And mm -hmm. there was a little place there for the little babies, a little fence place. I mean, not big, probably 10 by 10. This is a small motel. But the picture window overlooked the ocean. I mean, it was like we died and went to heaven. And so I said, when do you need us? Because <laughs> I, I was like, uh, yeah, we were like desperate. And she goes, well, as soon as you can get over here, I remember. And a far funny story I get to tell. Um, it is funny. But <laughs> at the time, she says, you have the job. So I tell my wife, we have to so pack exciting. up. We have to get ready to go do this. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a trailer. No way to move. She had an uncle that volunteered to help me. He had a trailer and a way to take haul all our stuff over there. But the problem was the day before we went, <laughs> I got <laughs> a vasectomy <laughs> the day before we went. And thanks for sharing. And that. her father requested the doctor, right? He because referred, he had had it, he referred, yeah, you to referred his me doctor. to his doctor because he had had one from him. He hated you. Yeah, we already had <laughs> three babies, and so she, <laughs> when she had Israel, I told her to have that stuff taken care of. She <laughs> she goes, I've had three kids. You take care of that situation. <laughs> so I had to go to the butcher man. Butcher man. He's really good. My father, my father, he must have hated me. But, he sent me this guy. This stuff don't hurt. No problem. Blah, blah, blah. I got on that table and that old man missed something. Because <laughs> I came four feet up off of that table. I almost reached out and choked that dude with that scalpel. And I said, holy. And he, he, I don't know if he said anything there or what. It was probably something normal. But it was not fun. So anyway... Okay, go home. Don't lift anything, whatever you do. For two weeks, guy you weren't told me. supposed to. You are supposed weeks. to ice and not lift. So we're moving the next day, right? Two days later. And whatever. Why do you keep messing me up? Gosh. One day later. Okay, one day. In my brain. So we get, <laughs> Lonnie says, I'll take you over. So we go over there. Wasn't supposed to lift. We were so excited. I didn't even think about asking anybody to help me. And Diana then was strong. She always helped me move. And so her and I, man, and we, we load that thing up and, and he drove us over because he's kind of a little bit older. I followed. So, we did. We had a little Dotson. We had my dad's Dotson. They don't even so make them the anymore. So you brought the car and me and Lonnie. Our $400 went, Dotson. Yeah. Had the kids and me in it. So we get there and they, they had this little place for us and, and the kids. Mm -hmm. And it had 17 rooms. And we actually, we did everything. We did the maintenance. We did the maid stuff. I did 17 rooms every day. Did I was laundry. just so happy to have any kind of job. I'm doing all this maid stuff, making beds, getting laundry. 17 beds every day I had to do. And she would do answering the phones when someone wanted to make a reservation, all that kind of stuff. She would deal with the, with the people. And so I can remember, oh my God, Dad, I'm not, I'm not feeling too good. She says, what's wrong? I said, uh, I mean, I, I'm hurting from where that guy whacked me. I can't hardly walk. I was so swollen, I couldn't hardly move. And should they warn me, don't lift me. <laughs> we moved an entire apartment, right? Or the entire house. And so, Anyway, I'm going to let you talk some more about that place because I'm tired well, of talking. Well, it was, it was just amazing. We had um, the opportunity to be at this place on the beach. The kids were growing. We had people coming and going back from the Valley of California to stay with us on their weekends. And uh, the couple that had hired us had made it sound like that they were going to have all this other help there. And they had said, you get your room and your board and you'll get... I believe it was like $400 or $500 a month, but they made it sound like they were going to have maids to do the rooms. They were going to have the laundry done. 
So here, once again, we were in a situation not unlike the Midwest where we went just pure hearted, believing that what they offered they were going to do. And uh, all of a sudden we found ourselves working like 24 seven with no help. And Dennis wasn't kidding. We did. I was washing and drying, watching the kids, doing the laundry, cleaning the rooms, ordering stuff. And then every afternoon as people were coming in, I'd check them in. We never had a dinner together or anything. And uh, again, the boys had no clue. We just kept they played there on the the lot and they loved it um we had yeah. some amazing times and i remember my parents brought over for the older two for isaiah and isaac israel wasn't big enough but they came and brought them for christmas motorcycles three-wheel motorcycles that they could drive around the driveway there and it did happen to be the off season because we had come into the fall and so we stayed there through christmas but what happened is uh they discovered that by the workman's comp laws, they were not paying us. The couple we replaced had decided to sue them for doing the same thing to them. And workman's comp, we found out later, they found out, oh my gosh, we've been using this couple. You can't get two people 24 seven and claim that because you gave them a roof, that was the complete pay with the tiny bit we were getting. And so, uh, when they discovered that, they decided that they were going to fire us. And here we were so excited to have been back on our own and we were taking care of things. And I will never forget, you have to tell your aunt's story because in the old days, Dennis would have absolutely would have killed this guy. I mean, you know, figuratively speaking, but I mean, oh my gosh, here this little family and there was not a lot of options out there for us because we were always trying to find jobs where we worked together because of all that we were walking through from the Vietnam thing. And here um, we thought everything was okay. And this man walked up, Dennis was working out. Why don't you share on the sidewalk? <laughs> yeah. I have to correct you though about the motorcycles. <laughs> they were plastic toys. Yeah, little three wheels. Well, yeah. So yeah. people, and you said, <laughs> Bottom motorcycles. Yeah. You really treat Little yourself. toys. Papa oh, Wheelies thank on you. Real motorcycle? No, no. Yes, Plastic no. toy motorcycles. Oh, they were like five and expensive. four. Expensive. They were good. <laughs> they thank you, them. Grandma. Them were expensive. <laughs> thank you, Mama. <laughs> Say and uh, Isaac loved them. But, but so they knew this, um, that we were going to get fired after working our brains out. Was just I was one uh, <laughs> thrilled that we just got fired. And I can remember looking at that guy. And <laughs> I, he said something about a toilet or something. He walked up to you. We were working out on the sidewalk and, and you were getting weeds out or something. And we broke a toilet or one of the kids threw a toy in it or oh, something. Oh, so was he, Kansas. He, no, 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 no. This was there. Okay. He used that for part of the excuse. Probably like, happened more than once. Kids, you know, <laughs> too many kids. You run in a motel. There's kids everywhere. Probably. So anyway, I was thrilled. Uh, his name was Jack. Jack right? and Gloria. Jack. And Jack, he was different. <laughs> he, they had two or three motels, matter of fact. But they had another one in town. And let's say their reputation wasn't too swift for... Um, All that found know, out later. Respecting yeah. what they owned and, you know, they trashed their places. And, and so anyway, I was, I was ticked. And so I thought... You know, I grew up with three brothers. I was the fourth. So we learned to do mischievous stuff. And so I was sneaking out. What could I do to get away with it with this guy without plastering in between eyes with the right hook? Because that's what I really wanted to do. But I was changing. <laughs> Violence was leaving, so I couldn't do that. So what can I do? So the guy's out, I, she didn't know anything about this. I'm, I'm conniving, man. I'm thinking, my jack was dude up somehow. And so I thought, perfect plan. Can't get me in trouble. The guy's out there with an insect spire, you know, owns a motel, he's going to kill cockroaches, whatever. So he's out here spraying. So I kind of sneak up behind him. I 
very quietly got up. He didn't know I was there at all. And he's praying, he's in his little heaven. And I scream as loud as I could, ants <laughs> behind his ear. I scream. <laughs> that guy threw his insect thing. He jumped up three feet. And I said calmly, ants! Right there. See him? Look at all the ants, dude. You better, We're lucky he you didn't better fall spray. Over. You better spray them things. This oh. guy was in such shock. <laughs> He's probably he probably thought who the H did I hire here? This guy's a <laughs> lunatic. Because I went from maniac, oh. anger, and rage to it was so funny. I had to compose myself immediately like it was a, <laughs> it was the most normal <laughs> thing in the world. And I said, Jack, you know. Make sure to get all them ants. <laughs> he was oh, standing yeah. with his mouth open. I just walked away. <laughs> when told that, I know what I had just done. She's going, oh, jeez, like, she oh, couldn't stop God. laughing. Oh, God. And so we had to get the H out of there. Oh, God. That, that's and, what I remember. Oh, uh, one more story. Oh, go for it. <laughs> because sometimes she would leave me in the front desk to greet people. Not for long. <laughs> so, because she would, the kids, she had to take care of the kids. <laughs> So I'm at this desk one night, and this guy walks in. He's about 10 feet tall. It's like his head was hitting the roof, and he had this big cowboy hat on. And he was drunker than a roller skate. And I came from that world, so I thought, oh, what's this? And the dude goes, comes in and goes, the bell. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't stand us. it. He comes in and he says, how much for a room? type of thing. Oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. I told him. And he goes, that's a lot of damn money. And I go, I agree. <laughs> I, said, I, I just work here, dude. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just telling look at this. See this list I got here? I'm supposed to go by this list. You want room 10? $39.95. I can't, can't give you a deal, can't do nothing, but I tell you, that's a lot of freaking money. I want him to get, to, get out of there. He's getting mad, and he goes, what's this freaking thing? There's a big old bell on the, you know, on the counter if you wanted you to, if you're back in the back room and you needed someone to help, help you know, any customer, mm -hmm. you ring this bell, big old bell. He goes, how much for this bell? I said, dude, I can't sell that bell. I just work at the owner owns a bell. How much for this bell? <laughs> and I said, three dollars. <laughs> um, how about how about five bucks? And he just, he just looked at me and go, three? And he goes, three dollars. Okay, I'll give you three dollars. Dude, like <laughs> he's, he's just well stole the bell, right? So he the took the bell. the bell. So the owner's in there. The next day, you know, Where's they were the the, them kind of people. They didn't know where everything is. Uh, Dennis, what happened to the bell? <laughs> I said, what bell? The bell you ring when the people come in one. I go, do them, sit down. The man in Let room. Let me tell you a story, the, Jack. The man in room 10. You don't pay me enough to, to save your bell. Combat. I said, there was a dude, 10 feet tall, drunk, came in here last night. He wants your bell. So you owe me three dollars. <laughs> on top of what you owe me. For so, putting me through that. Yeah. So I'm not gonna oh, die for God. your bell. No. Anyway, oh. I'm trying to think of what went on there besides work. And we didn't get much time off. I would take Isaac down to the pier and we would catch Jack Smelt. That's a, that's what they call Jack Smelt. Off the pier, and he was just a little guy. And he catch like two at a time and took everything he had to catch. He loved that. To reel them fish up, boy, all the way up that pier, he'd catch them fish. Well, they're probably pretty good size. And we'd take them home and mama would make tuna fish. I was going to say, that was another, we were so poor. <laughs> another story. way of survival. I didn't know. <laughs> Our pay was so little, we would have qualified for food stamps. And we were just trying to make the best with what we had. And so... We would go down, and when the fish were running, we found out about piers and schools of fish and how why they put six or eight uh, little hooks on a thing, and school goes through, and you pull up, and you got six fish at once. 
but I literally, we would take Jack smelt that we got at the fair and I would go home and bake them and remove all the bones, which it, if anybody's ever dealt with Jack's mouth, it's not easy. And I would make tuna out of it. And we would pretend once again that this was wonderful and exciting and normal. And my sons got to eat Jack's mouth tuna because it beat not eating anything. So around the time that they had uh, told us that we had to go, we had several weeks. And oh, my God. Back to the whole Vietnam, uh, what do you do? What do you do as a couple? What do you do as families? We looked everywhere. Well, didn't you want to tell about ending up in court? That was that, after afterwards. So oh. we we started, well, I'll go there, though. I appreciate that. We were, uh, we were looking everywhere. We got in our little car, and we would, uh, by then, they agreed to have a person come in one day a week because they already knew they were in trouble with workman's comp. <clears throat> and so I was figuring out that pretty much for our life, we had to do things together because A, the man who yelled dance at the uh, owner of the, <laughs> yep, the place, and we actually were fired before he yelled dance. Um, we had to do things together. I was either creating businesses or, and we thought, well, what makes sense is, hey, we just managed a motel. We should be able to look for jobs where we get our housing and, you know, we get our pay and, I always would take care of all technical stuff and then Dennis could do yards or do whatever or paint a room or do whatever he needed to do. And we'd do things together where he was able to pretty much be isolated and do his own thing and walk away if he was having a bad day or whatever. And we so went here, all the way up and down the coast. We went, okay. oh my gosh, we came, we went and went in the mountains of Fresno. We looked through Oakhurst. We looked through everywhere. We, we looked trying to find something and once again we were literally coming down to the day we had to drive away we had i believe we literally had pretty much our clothes i don't remember what happened with other things that we owned but long story short we drove away with our children in the car from that job Literally not knowing where we were going to go. We had three kids in the car. We hadn't let anybody know that we literally had nowhere to go. And once again, you talk about faith. We were trusting somehow that something would happen. So we drove back to Visalia area, which is the area that my parents were in. And I will never forget, we went to a little park called Royal Oaks Park. And we just could not believe that we had gone from Terrabella, where we had given our hearts and everything to serve people 24-7. And we were, again, you need to understand if you've been in a really dark place. There's a saying that the goodness of God will get your attention. And I tell you, we were so grateful because our both of our pasts had been through such heavy pain that we just were determined to be happy with what we had and go forward. And so here we sat at this park and I remember we did not even have a full tank of gas and we looked at each other and so I said, angry. Oh, I, I, said I don't angry. get it. We went from trying to work for the nice people in the Midwest. We got this job and got fired because they were underpaying us. And the other people had already won a lawsuit. And we knew that if we chose to sue them, that would take time. But here we were sitting in this park. And once again, Dennis was used in direction as he has been in our lives many times. And he said, you know, if we're going to end up going off down the road or whatever we think we're going to do, you should at least let your parents see the grandbabies. And so I called my mom and dad and I said, we're in town and, uh, my mom sensed something was really wrong. And she said, well, why don't you, uh, it's early. Why don't you guys come over for a barbecue? And so I looked at Dennis and I said, well, they want to visit the kids and she'd like to have a barbecue. So of course, one thing led to another. And as we were there barbecuing and here they had helped us get reset up before we went and took this job at the coast the first time. 
uh, she said, oh, you can't just be driving off in, into whatever with no gas money. And we're like, God will provide. Yeah, well, you know, they're like, get some reality here, kids. It's like we so... Stupid <laughs> idiots. Just, we were so... But, you know, you can... This is interesting. You can be sincere yeah. with all of your heart, but you could be sincerely wrong. And... Thank God, I think the one who made us cares about your heart because you have a you have many times and occasions where you are so convinced and so sincere, but you are sincerely wrong. And so the invitation, once again, for my husband was to stay with my parents while we looked for work and looked for a home. And that whole little cycle had taken about a year, year and a half. And they were determined, I'm sure, to protect our babies that we thought we were just as doing as good a job protecting. But uh, so there we found ourselves. And this story has such an, an, an amazing ending having to do with faith. We, we were there literally at my parents for two weeks. And once again... I know it makes no sense, but Dennis said, we have to look for a house. I said... Well, first of all, you're talking about, I think, the point we're at now is my little sister, right? Hall Street. No, huh? We moved so many times. We had moved so many you're times. You're going to Hall Street now? This was to Hall oh, Street. Okay. We, we moved something like... 15, 16 times in just a handful of years. years ago. Mm -hmm. What ago. the miracle that I was referring to that was so amazing was you said, we have got to find a house. And so we put the kids in the car and we started now driving around by Celia. I get it now. And we're looking, we're not even looking. We found an empty house on the edge of one of the nicest neighborhoods that was known at the time in our city. And there was a Spanish style home that had no sign. There was no for rent sign. It simply was empty and had some weeds in the yard like it wasn't being taken care of. And we were surprised because back behind it was the most prestigious neighborhood in all of Visalia known as Green Acres. And I got a desire to write the address down. So I wrote the address down and we went back to the house after we'd driven in circles. And I called the county, Tulare County, to find out who the owner of the house was. They let me know who the owner of the house was. And this is God's truth. The house we are sitting in right now is on a street where the owner of that house, all those years ago, over 20, whatever, 30 years ago, she lives across the street and down two houses. There were two close friends that had bought a home as an investment, and they both families were wealthy. They had children that happened to go to the school where my father taught, and they had children who knew who I was and I knew who they were, but I had never met these parents. So when I got the name of this owner and called her and I explained, I said, we're a family, we're starting over. We don't have work, but my husband's planning on checking into stuff immediately. We wanted to see what is the situation with this empty house. Well, she said, let's, could you meet us there tomorrow? So here we'd only been at my parents a couple weeks and I will never forget my poor father, old school Dutchman, worked 20 hours a day. Everything fit in its line and its boxes. Nothing happened. Mirac everything made sense in his world. And I will never forget we, what Dennis said, dress the boys as cute as you can. Little bow ties. Put little I mean, bow ties, was, comb their hair so cute. Funny. And my dad said, where, where are you guys going? And I said, oh. We're going to look for a house. We, we're, we're going to meet some people about a house. And he goes, uh, and they hadn't offered at this point. He said, uh, to get a house, you need money. 
And, and I said, and I think I said mm-hmm. some flippant little thing about not with God or whatever, because we were so religious and so like out there, like just crazy faith. <laughs> My verbiage was like, I just spit out what I thought at the moment. And so here we went to this house and this woman met us. And literally we walked through this house that was 19... 19- 40s with the glass blocks it was a spanish little hacienda type it had a building behind the main home that you could go up to the top of and sit and we it was next door to a park it was just absolutely amazing and we walked through this property and she turned and looked at dennis and i and she said literally she said you know what we're not worried about the money Here's the keys. When you get on your feet, how about if we agree to $400 a month? And this was literally around 1988 in Visalia where homes and green acres were not going for $400 a month. And we were so excited to get out of the downstairs, out of my parents' house, um, We didn't care if we just took blankets and slept on them. We were so excited that because we had gone by faith and looked and somehow that door opened and I'll never forget, she handed the keys to Dennis and we we were like, oh my goodness, we had no clue. Like everything that was going on, we walked back. I'll never forget this. We walked back into my she mom said, and dad's when, house. When do you want to move in? And I we, said. <laughs> she said tomorrow. We tomorrow. said tomorrow. Oh, work. <laughs> tomorrow. Go ahead. And so we literally we walked back into the house, and um, I threw I the threw the keys. On the my table. mom and dad had a little butcher block dining mm. table, and I'll never forget. I threw the keys on the table. And I said, oh, we've got a house to move to. And my, my father <laughs> just kind of, <laughs> this is not computing. So then we added insult to injury and we invited my mom and dad to come over and look at the property. And I'll never forget, I love my dad and he's in heaven now. And he loved us in spite of all of our crazy making and was there for us so many times. But this was even a big one for him. And he literally, when he got done walking through that house, he looked at me and he looked at Dennis and it had a little quarter acre next to it where there hadn't been a house built. And he literally turned and he walked out of the house and he walked to the end of the quarter acre. And I have no idea what his conversation with the Almighty was, but he he did not understand how our world was working. He was happy because we were getting our own home and I'm sure with their ages and and they weren't old, but they were teachers and busy lives. And I'm sure having a family of five with you was a big deal. So I went into the hauling business. You, we mm-hmm. did, we immediately, we- uh, Out of trailer. We started spreading the word through friends and family and we got on our feet and you were doing everything. Oh my gosh, we washed, uh, the sides of mobile homes. We wa- we climbed up and we hand scrubbed mobile home. We had an uncle that um, the same mm-hmm. one that had helped us move to the coast, and he ran a mobile home park. And we said, if you know any seniors that need anything moved, anything done, and so jobs were so just coming. We'd get over there and then be doing a job, and then must six old ladies walking up. <laughs> Can I talk to you a minute? Yeah. How much would you? Clean out my planters for and pull all the weeds around my mobile home. Nothing. Oh, we'll no, I'll, I'll look at it a little later. <laughs> We're so happy. So I'd go over and I'd go, I'd praise it, you know. Uh, had I been in landscaping yet? Uh, Not yet. No? Not yet. Anyway. Wait, yes, you did when we first got married. Yes, you I did. I had been a landscaper, yeah. actually, uh, uh, actual landscaper. Yes. Installing. Entire yes. lawns and sprinkler systems and all yeah. that stuff in one day. So you had some experience. I had experience. So so I'd go give them a bid. And these old grandmas would look at me like I was crazy. I was thinking like $10. <laughs> Saying it would be like an $80 job. And I'd tell them, okay, I'll do it for 10 And that word got around. I had old yeah. ladies stand in line. <laughs> Dude, are you going to come and clean up my planters? And will you wash my house? And. 
So we had we had plenty of work for that little mobile home park. So and then the call came. You're following this rodeo, right? Mm. So then the call came from Mama Lori in the Midwest, where we had started this exciting circle, and she out of said, nowhere, right? She said, <clears throat> "Kids, I." need someone to paint all these rooms at the Salina Inn. And what had happened is to Larry County's unemployment rate. We're going to save the next story for the next episode. But the reason we went through a little period of being able to provide for ourselves, the kids were growing, things were good. But there was a great recession and to Larry County's rate, unemployment rate had gone up to literally over 25%. One in every four was literally unemployed. I think over half the county was on food stamps. There was a horrendous time going on. So we got this call. And we took that job. We took that call and that job. We have a funny story to tell when we get to that. Just remember <laughs> the word train. <clears throat> Trains, planes, and Don't automobiles. <laughs> So thank you so much for listening and joining us, and we hope you're entertained and encouraged.